Hey everyone, this is Alex from the Cool Worlds Lab here in the Department of Astronomy at Columbia University. So I've spent the last couple of years working with David Kipping on the search for exomoons, and that is moons in other star systems outside of our solar system. And a question I often get asked is, uh, why do we care about exomoons? So basically, why do moons matter? Uh, this is a really great question, and I think in astronomy it's very important that we have a clear sense of why we study the things that we do. Perhaps the best way to answer this question of why we care about exomoons is to first start by thinking about what we see in our own solar system, and then think about what exomoons might be able to tell us. So what is it that we see? Well, in the inner solar system we see the small rocky planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Only one of these planets has a moon of any real significance, and that's Earth's moon, of course. But then in the outer solar system we see the gas giants and the ice giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And these planets have a bunch of moons. In our searches for exoplanets over the last two decades we've found lots of these giant planets like Jupiter and Saturn. They're comparatively easy to find. And it's a reasonable guess that uh, these planets, or at least many of them, might have a, a retinue of moons around them, just like Jupiter and Saturn. But what if they don't? You see, when we think about how life arose on the Earth billions of years ago, it's still very much an open question as to whether life arises uh, very quickly and easily, which might suggest to you that life is very common in the galaxy, or if you need a very, very special set of circumstances for a life to arise on the Earth, which might suggest to you, by contrast, that uh, life uh, is very difficult to get going, and so it could be exceedingly rare in the galaxy. And there are uh, compelling arguments on both sides of this debate. Well, by looking for exomoons, by looking for moons in other star systems, we are in fact answering part of that question. Uh, because if it turns out that we see not very many moons out there at all, then that suggests that maybe there really was some something very peculiar, something unusual about what was going on in our solar system. By contrast, if we find lots of moons out there in other star systems, uh, that suggests that at least as far as this bit of our history is concerned, we grew up under very ordinary set of circumstances. And you might conclude that, uh, well, it happens here and it can happen in a billion other places around the galaxy. This is very much an open question. Now, when we look at Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus, they almost look like little solar systems of their own. You have the massive planet in the middle, and you have the moons going around them in the same direction, more or less in the same plane. And it's generally believed that those moons formed out of material swirling around those planets in the early years of their formation. But Earth's moon is a very different beast. As far as we can tell, it didn't form that way at all. Instead, it's generally believed that sometime in the first hundred million years or so of the solar system's history, a giant impactor, maybe the size of Mars, collided with the early Earth, uh, blew an enormous amount of material off into space, and that material coalesced over time to form the moon. But how often does something like that happen? If we could see other moons out there that looked something like Earth and its moon, uh, we might be able to answer that question. Astronomers often like to make uh, computer simulations where you build a little uh, toy model of the solar system, say you set the initial conditions and press go and you see what happens. And simulations like that can tell us a great deal. Uh, but until we have real observations of these moons, we can never really be sure how accurate our simulations are. So, why look for a moon like Earth's moon? Well, it's thought that the moon has played an important part in the origin and evolution of life here on the Earth. For one thing, the moon is a stabilizing presence. It's thought that without the moon, the axial tilt of the Earth uh, might vary much more drastically, uh, and that could have severe repercussions for the long-term stability of ecosystems. And finally, it's thought that the moon may have also played a part in sustaining plate tectonics, and some scientists believe that plate tectonics uh, are an essential part of sustaining life here on the Earth. So far, I've told you we want to find exomoons for what they could tell us about the formation of our solar system and the formation of other star systems. And I've suggested that uh, exomoons could also play an important part in the habitability of their host planets. But there's something else which you might have guessed at if you've seen Avatar or uh, Return of the Jedi. And that is, of course, habitable moons, exomoons that could sustain life on their surface. But hold on, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Is there any evidence that moons themselves uh, could be habitable? Yes, absolutely. We've got good reason to think uh, 
that moons uh, could be habitable in their own right. If we look at Jupiter and Saturn, we see a whole host of very large moons, some of them larger than our own moon, some of them larger than Pluto, some of them even larger uh, than Mercury. And if they orbited the Sun directly, we would almost certainly call them planets, and you would have grown up learning their names in school. These worlds are all remarkable, amazing places, and all astonishingly different from one another. Uh, more than that, uh, many of them have active geological processes going on. Volcanoes and geysers spewing material hundreds of kilometers above the moon's surface out into space, and many of them also have spectacular amounts of water, even liquid water. And Titan, the largest moon of Saturn, even has an atmosphere and lakes of liquid methane on the surface. These are remarkable worlds. If you put it all together, we've got liquid water, we've got an internal heating mechanism, and in at least one case, we have a substantial atmosphere. Well, it starts to look like these moons really do have uh, the critical ingredients uh, that you need for life. And you may know that NASA right now is actively looking at uh, exploring these moons in greater detail to see if life could exist on these moons or maybe even whether life is there right now. Even so, uh, these moons in our outer solar system are not nearly as hospitable to life as, say, a planet like the Earth. But could there be truly habitable moons? Well, the truth is, we don't really know the answer to that question yet. Let's say you have a planet uh, like Jupiter orbiting another star in what we call the habitable zone. That is, the region where liquid water can exist on the surface of the planet. Well, if we're considering that gas giant, it's probably not going to be a great place uh, to look for life. But if that gas giant has moons orbiting it, those moons are also in the habitable zone. And that could be an entirely different story. If the moon is sufficiently large and properly shielded from stellar winds and the like by a magnetic field of some kind, it stands to reason that you very well could have an atmosphere and liquid water on the surface, and that planet might look very much uh, like the Earth. So by looking for these exomoons, we're potentially expanding dramatically the amount of real estate available for life to arise elsewhere in the galaxy. Put together, understanding the history of our solar system and other star systems, characterizing the habitability of exoplanets that host a moon, and looking for habitable exomoons, all of these lead me to conclude that exomoons really is worthwhile and it's really exciting. It's been my great privilege uh, working on the search for exomoons with David Kipping here at Columbia. Uh, so stay tuned as we publish more of our results and share more of our findings uh, here with you on the Cool Worlds uh, channel. And I hope I've convinced you that exomoons are really cool and worth learning a little more about. So as always, uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you like what you've seen, please uh, click subscribe below. And if you have any questions, leave those in the comments section and we'll try to answer them for you. So uh, I hope you've learned something. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you around the galaxy.